Hello everyone, welcome to our session, Developing AI to Motivate Game Players, The Case of Marvel Future Fight. My name is Heian, I am a COO at tend to play We are a team of economists trying to understand user behaviors when playing games. tend to plays goal is to help players have more fun while playing games. In this talk, I'm going to share our story of developing AI to understand players and motivate them to engage in the game Marvel Future Fight. Before we get started, I wanted to briefly open with a story, one from the TV show The Big Bang Theory. One day, Sheldon and his friends were playing World of Warcraft. While everyone was busy blowing the gate, fighting against goblins, Sheldon didn't care about the battle but was obsessed with getting the sword and selling on eBay. While everyone was blaming him for betraying the team, Howard bought the sword and became the sword master. Although they were playing the same game at the same time, they showed very different behaviors as they have different motivations. This is not specific to the Big Bang Theory. If you log into the games or look around your fellow players, you will see various types of people with various game playing styles. But finding these people through reviews is not easy. And only 3 to 5% of players request customer support. We know that there are players with different playing styles, we've seen them, and we know that they have different preferences and approaches to their gaming. What if we can find these different kinds of players and tailor the gaming experience to them with data? What if we understand what each individual user wants and provide them with what they need? What if we know which part of a game the user has the most difficulty with and guide them as a personal assistant would? That's what we did with Netmarble Monsters Marvel Future Fight. Tend to play help the studio understand the players' motivations and suggested strategies and items to players to help them have more fun. Netmarble Monster is a mobile game studio located in South Korea. In January 2020, Netmarble Monster unveiled Mana Strike based on Magic The Gathering, which offers simple, tactical, and strategic gameplay. Marvel Future Fight, which we had a project with, is an action RPG that was released in April 2015. It surpassed the 100 million download mark worldwide in 2018. In Marvel Future Fight, we identified several personas, including those who play PvP from the beginning, cosmetic lovers, and character loyalists. In this talk, I'm going to focus on two personas, the collector and the smart and busy player. This is our approach to understanding what different types of users want and what makes them leave the game. Users have different expected utility, but when games cannot satisfy the user's expected utility, the user gets disappointed and leaves the game. First, we identify a user's persona. A persona represents a type of player and is created to embody a certain targeted segment in a game. Defining personas starts with identifying what players expect from a game. We start with psychological theories on what makes people play video games and also turn to communities like Reddit for ideas. Then, we measure the realized utility and test if the gap between expected utility and realized utility results in player dropout. We use various econometric methodologies to test the hypothesis, such as Chow test, survival analysis, and regressions. 
If the test result shows that the identified gap caused players to leave the game, we provide strategies to give players what they want and item recommendations that help players realize their utility and meet their expectations. Collectors are those who like collecting playing with various characters. With this definition, we identified collectors from game data. In this graph, yellows and blues are the collectors. We tested whether the players we found were actually different from others. To do this, we compare the retention ratio, lifetime days, or the remaining days from the join date, and the number of unique days of playing. The test results showed that collectors indeed stay longer in the game than non-collectors with higher retention, higher lifetime days, and higher number of days played. So why do collectors leave the game? What makes the collectors unsatisfied with the game? In Marvel Future Fight, in order to get new heroes, players need to progress to more stages and level up continuously. We hypothesize that the level of the heroes positively affects the retention of collectors. To test this hypothesis, we divide the collectors into two groups, the hardcore collector and the casual collector. Hardcore collectors are those who collect heroes with higher levels, and casual collectors are those who gather lower level heroes. Then we tested our hypothesis with t-test and panel analysis to verify the causal relation. The test results showed that hardcore collectors play longer than casual collectors. In other words, higher level causes higher retention. To help the collectors achieve the expectations they had of the game, we made it easier for collectors to enhance the hero's level. This is a personalized message we provided to the collectors. On the left side, the player can see the information on current collection progress. On the upper right side, we offered strategies for heroes to level up first. Also, we offered useful items that help players level up their heroes. As a result, retention and level of speed for the collectors increased. These graphics compare user performance between before and after implementation. Another persona we searched in Marvel Future Fight was the smart and busy player. We defined these players as gamers who balance resources, spend them efficiently, and spend less time in the game. We identified smart and busy players using this definition and drew a retention graph to analyze whether they behave differently from others. You can see that smart and busy players have a higher retention rate. Next, we wanted to understand when and why these players cannot achieve the utility they expect to. Smart and busy players are those who balance resources, and use them efficiently. We assumed that a continued supply of coins would be essential for them. So we hypothesized that a coin supply would positively affect the retention of smart and busy players. We tested our hypothesis with survival analysis. The result showed that as smart and busy players earn more coins, the retention increases. To help smart and busy users achieve what they expected, we made it easier for them to earn more coins. This is a personalized message each smart and busy player receives in the game. The message gives the player information on their speed of growth and recommends game content to help the players earn more coins. The player can also get coins right away with in-app purchases. 
After implementing Tend to Play for smart and busy players, the retention and in-app purchases increased. You might think that Tend to Play's AI only works for large RPG games, but it is not. Small indie developers implemented Tend to Play to analyze their users and send personalized messages. Raising Ants is an idle game developed by G Aim Studio, an indie game studio in South Korea. Released in 2018, it has 140,000 downloads. This is the example of a personalized message that user can receive when they play the game. We've done an A-B test to compare those who got the message with those who didn't get the message. Results show that users who saw Tend to Play's message had an 88.46% higher retention rate. Also, we helped more indie game developers learn more about their players. Hexagon Dungeon is a puzzle RPG developed by Blair Games, which was selected for the top 10 in the 2019 Google Play Indie Game Festival in South Korea. If you look at the user data as a whole, you can see the smooth line of retention as time passes. But if you segment players by each persona, the retention graph is totally different. We found that the perfectionist type of users drops on day 5 and the studio starts to form an idea of what the problem is. You might think that players in different countries act differently and that needs to be considered in our AI. Yes, there are various types of players in different countries. However, although the portion of each persona is different, the persona method can be extrapolated globally. Hero Factory is an idle game launched globally in 2020 made by Playhard. It is about creating heroes in factories and hunting monsters. Although it is an indie game studio in South Korea, it surpassed 3 million downloads globally with self-publishing. In this case, we found that not only retention, but also the number of ads watched per person differs for each persona. Although these examples are of mobile free-to-play games, Tend to Play is not limited to certain game genres or platforms. Some of our partners are preparing PC games, which will be released through Steam, and we are working with them to analyze the beta test result and improve the game. Applying Tend to Play to various game genres is possible because we have developed a flexible architecture and standardized gameplay log data for diverse game genres. And we have more than 28 personas that can explain the player's playing motivations and playing styles. If you visit our website, you can download Tend to Play SDK, which is available for Unity for now, and implement the SDK into your game with guides from documentation. Let me show you how to integrate Tend to Play SDK into your game. After installing SDK into Unity, insert codes for log data collection inside your game. Then, Tend to Play AI will analyze data and segment players into diverse personas. You can see the analysis results in Tend to Play's dashboard. If you want to send a personalized message to players, insert one line of code showing Tend to Play CRM and design the message to make it fit your game UI. To learn more about us, please visit our virtual booth or visit our website at www.tentoplay.io. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the GDC event.